Hello, my mathematical friends. Today we will prove Lagrange's theorem, certainly one of the most beautiful and significant things in modern mathematics. So let G be a finite group. By finite, I mean the order of G is not infinite. And let X to be a subgroup of G. Then we have the following. The order of X divides G. So the order of X is one of the dividers of the order of G. Okay, so that's a beautiful thing. You may have noticed that in our calculations in some of the previous videos. But we can go further. Lagrange's theorem says that the number of distinct cosets, it doesn't matter if it's left or right, choose one. The number of distinct cosets of X is the order of G divided by the order of X. That's very beautiful. We'll look at an example of that later. So this is a very beautiful and significant result that everyone should know. So let's try to prove this. We saw in the previous video that not all the cosets of X are uh, unique. They're not necessarily all unique. So let's write down the unique ones. G1, X g2x all the way up to grx. So let's say there's r unique, unique cosets. So these are not duplicates. And by the way, if you don't understand this terminology that I'm using in this video, cosets, subgroup, well, it just means you have to watch the previous few videos <laughs> in the group theory series where I introduce all of these ideas. Now, all, all elements of G belong to a coset because we proved before, we proved this in a previous video. I'll put all the links to those videos in the description box. We proved that G always belongs to the coset that it generates. And GX, of course, is one of the cosets that appear in this list of unique ones. So it's all elements of G will be in here somewhere. And so we have the following interesting thing. The union of all of these distinct cosets is G. We know that's true. That's the union property. We Actually, we proved that before in the last video. Well, we're doing it again here. Okay, and we also know from the last video that each of these distinct cosets, any two of them are disjoint. So if i is not equal to j, then g i x is, and okay, we, we intersect it with g j x, this is null, they are, they are disjoint. We proved that in the previous video. Okay, great, so now we use a set theory result. If you have a union b is c, with the condition that a intersect b is empty, then you can say the following a, the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B equals the number of elements in C. So this is a consequence of inclusion and exclusion. It's like a really simple version of that. So from the union property, I can get this here. But from uh, the disjoint property, I can now distribute this order symbols across all of them like so. And we also proved that the order of any coset of X, subset X, is equal to the order of X. We proved that in the last video. So you see how easily everything falls into place if you go through all the proofs I did in the last few videos. Those were all necessary to make Lagrange's theorem kind of totally easy and elegant in this video. So now, because of this, well, it's very easy to rework this. I have now x, order of x, plus order of x, plus dot, 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 plus order of x is order of g. And how many of these things are there? Well, there's r of them, so I have r, order of x is g. Now, r is uh, a natural number, so r has to be in n. And so therefore X, the order of X must divide. It has to be a factor of the order of G. So there we go, there's part one. That's a beautiful, beautiful relationship or beautiful concept that we can prove about all groups 
it's just amazing it's like this beautiful crystal like symmetry of these finite groups that there are things living inside them that divide them <laughs> you know it's very amazing you could also say it's very mystical in a way and now for part two that's really easy we just go here r is uh sorry i should put the order symbol r is the order of g divided by the order of x so r if you go back and look at what is r r is the number of distinct cosets all right so if i know if i multiply the order of the let's let's write it this way yeah this is a beautiful way of saying it all right let's look at it here the order of x number of elements in x times the number of distinct cosets of x that's equal to the size of the group that's amazing that's lagrange's theorem that's a very beautiful thing so now let's look at an example let's take an example for our group let's take the integer group mod 22 the multiplicative one and this group will have 10 elements and i can compute them the usual way there they are 10 elements and the way to combine these elements in the group is by using multiplication mod 22. now let's look at all the subgroups yeah the subgroups okay um so of course one is a subgroup that's a easy one i have a subgroup of order one now i looked through this inside out using a computer program that i wrote and uh, i found the following subgroups so i found a subgroup of order two i found a subgroup of order five and of course the whole thing itself is a subgroup. There, there's a subgroup of order 10G itself, and these are the only subgroups. Now, notice that there's one subgroup of each type, of each order, but this is not always the case. Sometimes you can have many subgroups of order 5 or, or so on. So this is maybe a bit of an unusual case. Right, so let's look at these two here, this one and this one, and check it out. Let's see what Lagrange's theorem says about this. Well, first of all, Lagrange's theorem says that these uh, orders of these subgroups will divide the order of G. And is that true? Yeah, 1 divides 10, 2 divides 10, 5 divides 10, and 10 divides 10, just like uh, how um, Lagrange's theorem says. Okay, so let's take for the moment subgroup 121 let's find all cosets of x what does lagrange's theorem say about this well lagrange's theorem says that there is order of g divided by order of x distinct ones so that's 10 divided by 2 so that's five distinct ones five distinct ones let's see if that's true here's the first half of it so i can see that some are distinct actually they're all distinct yeah look at that okay this let's colorize them this this purple yellow and uh what kind of green here okay well would you look at that okay let's try to use the color coding this is blue this is the same as this one and uh, where's the green one? The green one is 913. That's up here. Where's the red one? Three, it's 319. That's here. Uh, where's the purple one? Five, 517 is right here. And there's one more, the yellow one that's here. So yeah, there's two of each. And there's five distinct. Okay, let's write down the five distinct ones. There are my five distinct ones. Now, if I union them all together, I get back my group G. Very nice. So now let's try the other one. X is one, three, five, nine, 15. The order of X is five. So what does this tell me? This tells me that mm, order of G divided by order of X, that's 10. 
10 divided by 5, that's 2. So there will be two distinct cosets out of all of them. So let me compute now all these cosets and show you. All right, this is what we have. Um, I'll color code them. These are blue. They're all the same, whereas this one will make it red. This one's a bit different. Okay, let's try the rest of them. Right, that's amazing. Okay, blue. Blue is the one, three, five. Okay, and the red, that's all the other ones. Amazing symmetry. So I get four reds on this side and one blue, when I had four blues and one red on the other side. So it works. I have two distinct cosets as expected. So here are my two distinct cosets, and if I union them, I get back G, of course, so it forms a perfect partition. Well, let's make some room here. So if you are into numerology, like mystical <laughs> numerology, this should really turn you on. Why? Because there's so many fascinating, strange patterns and behaviors in playing around with groups, and I recommend that you play around with them. Get pencil and paper and play with this stuff. Play with subgroups X of some group. And I showed you how to make integer groups, how to manipulate them, how to prove things about them. Do calculations with them. It's very interesting. It may be even better than, maybe arguably better than Sudoku or crosswords, or even maybe better than playing chess for developing your mind because you're actually... Uh, n not just entertaining yourself, but you're doing some rather deep mathematics that's like at the heart of modern mathematics. Group theory is unquestionably one of the cornerstones of modern, modern mathematics. So what you're doing here goes really deep. There's nothing technically very difficult about what we've been doing. It's just multiplying and, and adding stuff mod n. And so for teachers, you can... You, ha you can have infinite possibilities of creating work for students, interesting test questions, interesting assignments, and interesting things to do with them on the board. There's like an infinite possibilities with this. At some point, if you're a programmer, you can try using computers, write programs to help you do computations in group theory. So you can work with bigger groups and discover things faster. And coming up next, in the next video, I will prove that... The primes are limitless. There's an infinite number of primes. There's many ways to prove that. We've used several ways already, but I'm going to do this now by Lagrange's theorem, by group theory, and I'm sure that most of you have never seen this proof, so it's going to be really amazing. As always, subscribe, like, and comment. Do some experiments in mystical group theory numerology and write about it and show me what you find. There's just uh, so much fascinating stuff going on with numbers. If you like playing with numbers, this kind of takes it to another level. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time.